let's get the obvious out of the way. The Poco X2 is a rebranded Redmi K30. This is not the sequel to the Poco F1 that you guys were waiting for. But you know what? Honestly, you don't need to care too much about it. Allow me to explain why. But before I start off with my review, let me also address one other thing. The Poco X2 is a really funny and odd name for a phone which is very similar to the name of its immediate rival, the Realme X2. I mean, which X2 would you pick? Anyway, I'm Ashraf from Mr. Phone and this is our full review of the newly launched Poco X2. But before we move on, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get notified whenever Mr. Phone puts out an awesome new tech video. Also, our sponsors for this video are the awesome folks over at Glazed Ink who make screen protectors for most Indian smartphones out there. In fact, they have one coming for the Poco X2 release soon, so you should go and check their website, a link to which should be in the description below. Their screen protectors are great because they're obviously better than the ones that you can pick up from the roads for like, you know, 50, 100 bucks, but their screen protectors can actually curve around 2.5D class displays and it is really well done. Also, one more thing, if you are buying a glazed ink screen protector, know that considering you are a Mr. Phone user, you get a special discount code, which should be flashing on your screen right now. I'll put it out there, the circular cutout of the rear that encircles the vertical camera module looks odd despite the gorgeous purple colorway. It is not exactly an entire circular cutout module like the one on the OnePlus 7T. The cutout on the Poco X2 feels less like a design flair and more like an eccentric choice if you ask me. Also, how odd is the placement of the dual LED flash below the circle? Furthermore, the whole designed by Poco text on the circle is a little funny if you ask me. If Poco wants to be considered now as a fiercely independent brand, then the X2 is a blatant copy of Redmi's design ID on the K30. If you think about it that way, it's, I'm just kidding. Anyway, you get a Corning Gorilla Glass 5 solution on the back and the front and the frame is made of plastic, but the finishing is so good that it actually feels like metal. You get an infrared scanner on the top and a Type-C port at the bottom. Of course, you can use the Mi Remote app to control appliances using the infrared scanner. And the Type-C port is flagged by a headphone port and the mono speaker. However, the layout is not symmetrical at the bottom and that annoys me to no end. By the way, the fingerprint scanner on the Poco X2 is a side-mounted one. It is placed on the power button and it is recessed inside a dent. The volume rocker sits above it. The scanner is super duper fast at recognizing fingerprints, so no complaint there and it also works really well as a power button. And of course, the tactile feedback on the volume rocker is great too. As for the SIM tray, it is a hybrid one. Now, here's the thing about the Poco X2's hand feel. It is a massive phone at 8.8mm thickness and 208 grams. You can feel that it is chunky and the glass back makes it slippery too. However, the ergonomics are good enough for everyday use thanks to the good weight distribution. Overall, when you look at the design, Poco might want to push the X2 as a fresh and new design, but that's really not the case uh, because, you know, we have the Redmi K30, which has a similar design ID. Having said that, if you consider the Poco X2 directly against the previous Poco F1, the X2 is definitely better looking and a much better industrial design, in my opinion. The Poco X2's display is the reason why anyone should buy this phone. It has a 6.67 inch IPS LCD panel with a 20 to 9 aspect ratio 
and Full HD Plus resolution. But the most important display spec is the fact that it comes with an insane 120Hz refresh rate out of the box. The cheapest phone with a high refresh rate display before this was the Realme X2 Pro. The Poco X2 is obviously a trailblazer in this regard considering that you get a high refresh rate display on a phone under Rs 20,000. The display is smooth and MIUI 11 has never looked this good. From scrolling through the app drawer to reading articles on the browser, the 120Hz refresh rate definitely adds a whole lot of smoothness to the usage experience. However, my only concern is that when the UI stutters, and there are a few occasions here and there, your eyes are treated to a jerky 120Hz refresh rate panel, and that is where it looks really odd. The problem is that MIUI 11 and Poco Launcher still need some more optimization to work as smooth as Oxygen OS on OnePlus phones. Despite that, 120Hz is an excellent addition. Furthermore, the colors in natural mode on the display is very accurate too. The saturated mode adds a bit of pop, but not so much that it looks jarring. By the way, the Poco X2 does support wideband L1 certification and can play HD videos on Netflix. However, despite the HDR10 support, it can only play back HDR videos on YouTube. It doesn't work on Netflix. But when you play HDR videos, the display's brightness shoots up and it looks very good. But not everything is hunky-dory. Poco has decided to use a dual punch hole camera setup to the top right corner of the screen. It is very similar to the implementation of the Galaxy S10 Plus. However, here's the interesting thing. Poco doesn't use an entire hole punch cutout. Instead, it uses two separate hole punches for the two cameras and they're separated by a line of black pixels. I don't know if this is the reason, but if you look closely, you can notice the backlight bleed around the hole punch. Moving on, the bezels around the display are fairly thin, but the chin is a little large. Also, the haptic feedback is one of the best in this price range. It is not very precise, but it doesn't vibrate the whole phone. I quite like it. On the Poco X2, you get Poco Launcher on top of MIUI 11 on top of Android 10. Yes, it is a three-layer concoction that is minimalistic and pretty cool if you ask me. There are a few things I like and I don't like about the software experience. Let me break down what I like first. I like the fact that the new minimalistic design across the UI and gesture support for navigation as well, it's done really nicely. You also get a ton of customization options, including one where I can change the icon pack. Plus, the new live video wallpapers are a neat touch. You can now create tasks from within the notes app. In addition, the floating calculator option is pretty handy with the option to change transparency too. I still think that Poco Launcher's app drawer does a good job of categorizing apps into folders despite a few missteps. Poco is opening the bootloader for custom community development from day one and it has already given the phone to a few senior members in the XDA community. The most important thing is Poco has promised no ads. That's a 100% guarantee which is excellent. Now to the stuff that I don't like. The X2 is filled with bloatware. Thankfully, you can uninstall most of it. While the X2 won't have any ads, I still hate the fact that apps such as Daily Hunt, Mi Video, and the default browser throw so many notifications at you from the start. Most people don't even switch off the notifications. I think Poco made a mistake by pushing the default Gboard to the bottom of the screen, touching the chin. It makes typing a chore. While you get a dark mode, the advanced global dark mode feature that forces all apps to turn dark is missing. Mi Video throws recommendations from the internet even when you only want to view videos in offline mode. To be entirely honest, MIUI 11 has improved by leaps and bounds. Now I feel genuinely that you're getting a premium software experience for such a low price. So that's really well done. Kudos, Poco. The Poco X2's most exciting hardware, for me at least, has to be the new 64 megapixel Sony IMX686 sensor that works as the primary camera. This is the first phone with this sensor in India. You get three other cameras, an 8 megapixel wide angle camera, 2 megapixel depth camera, and a 2 megapixel macro camera. What I noticed while shooting pictures is the phone takes a while to process photos after you've shot it. Otherwise, the camera app is well laid out and easy to use. Now, talking about the image quality, in daylight shots, the Poco X2 takes extremely detailed pixel bin samples. However, the Poco X2's algorithm definitely picks up the highlights and when you shoot brightly exposed areas, it tends to overexpose and blow out the highlights. In some situations, it also crushes the shadows. For example, take a look at this picture of the building and the vista. You will see that it is brighter than usual. You can easily fix this in post by pulling down the highlights and the picture looks way better now. The 64MP shot looks crisp too. And this camera captures excellent facial tones as well with the rear camera. And of course, the selfies are great too with the selfie portraits as well. Now, while the selfie portraits are great and you know they do look good, 
I would have ideally, you know, switched this bokeh camera for actually a wide angle one on the front. Now, if that was expensive, I think that Poco could have gone for a single hole punch cutout and that would have looked even better than the current implementation that is out there. Anyway, moving on to the ultra wide camera, it can shoot decent wide angle pictures, but the highlights are blown out once again. Also, the pictures are not very sharp either with soft details, but the color processing is very similar to the primary camera. The 2 megapixel macro camera is just excellent for close up shots. The details are super crisp and in good lighting conditions, you get great colors as well. When it comes to low light shots, the POCO X2 does a good job for a budget phone. While there is a lot of noise, the brighter exposure is great. Most people will like the pictures you can get using the night mode especially. In fact, in this shot of the laptop on the dining table, the night mode fixes the dynamic range and controls the highlight very well. Perks of multi-frame processing, I guess. Coming to videos, the POCO X2 tops out at 4K 30fps video recording and it can do EIS at that high resolution as well. In fact, POCO X2 cannot do EIS only at 1080p 60fps. The video quality and stabilization is good enough and the sound recording is great too. In fact, you can shoot videos using the wide angle camera and the macro camera as well. The footage looks pretty good for a budget phone. The new vlog mode with preset shooting modes is actually very well done. You can get really creative with it. However, my only concern is that you need to know instinctively what to shoot and what kind of angles you need to take. I guess that will come with some training. So overall, when you're looking at the six cameras in totality and the kind of pictures that it can take, you actually get good results. And that's what I found out. Having said that, there's one caveat and that is the fact that it tends to blow out highlights in overexposed situations. If POCO fixes that soon in a software update, I'm pretty sure that this is possibly going to be the best camera under 20,000. And you know what? There's already a Gcam you know, module out there for the POCO X2 in the form of the one that exists for the Redmi K30. I haven't analyzed it deeply yet, so I'll do that in the coming days and let you guys know what it, uh, you know, what kind of pictures that it can take. But do also let us know what phones would you like to be compared against the POCO X2 in a camera comparison that we'll be doing soon. Internally, the POCO X2 comes with a Snapdragon 730G processor that is the same as the Realme X2. We have the variant with 8GB of RAM and 256GB of UFS 2.1 storage for review. Although the phone is also available in 6GB, 64GB and 6GB, 128GB variants too. Here are the benchmarks for you to see in comparison with its immediate competitors which is the Realme X2 and the Redmi K20 and the POCO F1. Now in daily performance the phone is fast and smooth too. There are no complaints as such and gaming is just blazing fast on the phone. I had loads of fun playing Call of Duty and PUBG. You can run PUBG at a maximum of HD graphics and high FPS by default. In Call of Duty, when I maxed out the settings, there were a few lags in intense firefights, but nothing to worry about too much. However, I did notice that the phone got warm after 15 minutes of gaming and we are still enjoying the winters in Delhi, mind you. Therefore, it could get hotter during summers. The POCO X2 has a 4500mAh battery and comes with a 27W charger inside. In my testing, this charger can charge the phone from 0 to 100 in under 1 hour and 15 minutes. The phone lasted me around 6 hours of screen on time on a couple of test runs with 120Hz refresh rate setting enabled. I'm sure with 60Hz you can get much much more battery life. Overall, the battery life of the phone is definitely another one of its strong suits. The POCO X2 speaker placement is a little odd and you will invariably muffle the sound when holding it in landscape mode but it is fairly loud and crisp otherwise. Forget about the speaker though, because the headphone jack has high risk support and most of my reference grade audiophile IEMs sounded phenomenal. You must switch on the hi-fi audio mode from the sound settings to make the best use of it. When it comes to calls, the earpiece does a fabulous job and the phone can also boost the volume. The 4G connectivity was rock solid through and through. Plus, you also get the option to make Wi-Fi calls should your service provider have support for it. So we're at the end of this review and at the time of you know shooting this review I don't have a handle on the price but I'm pretty sure that the base variant should start anywhere between 15,000 to 20,000 and in that price range 
the Poco X2 is an absolute steal. Just for that 120Hz display alone, I would pick this phone over any other phone, including the ones that come with AMOLED display any day. Also, it doesn't hurt that, you know, the performance is great. You get great pictures too. Battery life is really good. So, you know, what is there to complain about? Honestly, not much. So, let's now compare the Poco X2 against its immediate competitors. Obviously, the first comparison has to be with the Realme X2. Both the phones have a glass sandwich design and use the same Snapdragon 730G processor inside. However, the cameras are better on the POCO X2 and the 120Hz display is just leaps ahead of the 60Hz panel on the Realme X2. Considering everything despite all the minor niggles I've mentioned in the review, I'd easily pick the POCO X2 over the Realme X2. I'm just waiting for Realme's answer to the POCO X2 this year though because honestly, this one is not the actual competitor. Now, if you're considering the POCO X2, the Redmi K20 should be in your list as a potential alternative. Primarily because the K20 has an excellent design and a pop-up selfie camera, which means you get an all-screen display. Also, it is an AMOLED panel. I still have to test the cameras. However, the POCO X2 has a 120Hz display and a slight edge in overall performance going for it. This is a tough one, but I'd still pick the POCO X2 for, you know, a few other things that it gets right. Between the POCO X2 and the POCO F1, the latter only has a powerful Snapdragon 845 processor going for it. For everything else, the X2 is definitely better. Buy the POCO F1 today only and only if you want crazy fast performance and gaming. And to a certain extent, the POCO X2 can also do that. So, you know, you can check it out. So one thing's for sure is that the POCO X2 is not the upgrade or the sequel to the POCO F1 that we all were waiting for. In fact, the sequel to the POCO F1 is confirmed to come sometime later this year and we'll have to wait and watch for that. In the interim, let's not get too worked up and emotional about the whole rebranding situation. So that's it from me. I'm Ashraf from Mr. Phone. I hope you guys liked our review. Do let us know in the comment section below what you thought about it. Until next time, goodbye and Godspeed my friends.